We'll spin this platter now. What is up? Think Media TV, helping you move further, faster in media. Sean here, and today I'm with Scott McClellan, the writer and editor of Echo Hub, director of Echo Conference, really one of the leading voices in church communications, and an all-around gentleman of leisure. How's it going, Scott? Well, Sean, I'm trying to uh, do as little as possible uh, here today in order to be a gentleman of leisure. That's, that's tricky, but just the trick is to not do much. So it's Friday, and that's what I'm going for. I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. So we're going to be talking about uh, a few things. We're going to be talking about Echo Conference and Echo Hub. Um, as well as some of the best practices that um, are happening in the church communication space uh, right now that maybe you're doing and others that you're connected to are doing, and maybe just some good resources uh, resources in general out there for people doing church communication. So it should be exciting. Echo Conference uh, is a conference. Echo Hub is uh, an entity kind of website and, and thing, and, and you'll kind of go into that. A lot of people know about Echo and Echo Hub, but uh, a lot don't. So could you just give a, a rundown about what it is, uh, what it's all about, what, you're, what you guys are trying to accomplish with uh, those two, um, and yeah. Yeah, what, what we're really about is um, a specific audience. It's, it's the audience um, of people who work within the church, but, you know, usually don't find themselves at the pulpit. Uh, you know, they, they're communicators, but they're not necessarily preachers. Um, they are, they're ministers, but they're not necessarily youth ministers or college ministers or, you know, marriage ministers. They, they um, kind of work in the digital, visual communication kind of realm, or they are planning uh, worship services kind of in a behind the scenes and big picture kind of context. So, that's kind of who we are as a team of uh, writers and filmmakers and photographers and designers and web developers. That's who our team is, and that's the audience within the church that um, we're all about. So everything that we do, whether it's an event or a blog post or a product that we create or sell, um, hopefully is all about serving that audience uh, as best that we can. I love it. And now go into... Echo Conference is a yearly event, right? And what yep. is kind of, and then what is Echo Hub? Yeah, Echo Conference is a yearly event. We do it um, in the summer in Dallas, which is not necessarily the best place to be, but we always pick a nice venue with air conditioning and that kind of thing. So nice. um, we try to we try to gather the audience. It kind of has a feel of a family reunion um, where people in this kind of church communication world can can connect and learn and be inspired and kind of recharge a little bit, be challenged, um, hopefully pick up some new ideas, new techniques, and that kind of thing. Um, and then Echo Hub is really uh, our desire to keep that conversation going. Um, you know, Echo Conference is a three-day event. Well, what about the other 362 or 363 days, uh, since this is a leap year, uh, what about the rest of the year? We want to keep that conversation going on Echo Hub. Um, so I, we try to post something new uh, Monday through Friday. And uh, we have a store where, that we hope you know, resources people. And uh, that's what we're trying to do. Love it. So within this, you've been doing uh, – how many years has Echo been going? Uh, we've done four now. So Echo 2012 will be number five. So 2008 was the first event. Love it. And you've been uh, obviously exposed to and you're connected to a lot of the uh, leading uh, folks in church communications. Um, and what are some of the best practices um, that you would maybe uh, think really maybe generically, whether it's social media or just really connecting with local church and just kind of best practices in general, maybe some you're implementing yourself. And some yeah. of the ones that really stood out to you uh, that others are doing right now. One of my big themes lately has been because we're communicators, we tend to be on one side of the equation. And so one of my big things is to try to get on the other side of that communication model, to try to get inside your audience's uh, shoes, inside their head. And you know, instead of designing a website, 
try to use your church's website. You know, try to come up with a list of questions that a first-time visitor might have, and then go to your website and try to find that information. Um, it can be a lot harder <laughs> yeah. to figure out now when what how does children's care work, or how you know how how does when do the youth actually meet? You know, and how do I actually volunteer for this? And um, you know, where do I park and where do I go once I do park and that kind of thing. Um, you know, try to, try to put yourself in your audience's shoes and, and that's going to make your communication so much better. I, I know like I'll get so caught up in building a newsletter, writing a blog post, um, working on a, an event, working on a product that I forget to try to consume or receive that product that that blog post actually stop and read what i've written um i'm so busy writing it and just ready to publish it i'll stop and read it and and try to put myself in the mindset of someone other than the person that just wrote it <clears throat> i'm gonna have questions i'm gonna have thoughts um some things aren't clear some things uh, you know i start down a rabbit trail and abandon it but i don't know that unless i try to read it not it's not enough just to write it you know, it's not enough just to design it. You've got to try to use it also. Um, and that's going to make everything that you do so much better. Uh, you know, you can give it to other people as well um, to, to have them use it and watch them use it and try to observe. Um, but but I, I think it's something that starts with us as communicators um, to try to try to be the audience of that which we've communicated and really get a sense of how well we're doing where we're missing the mark and, you know, hopefully what we can do better. Yeah. It sounds like we, the term we use uh, a lot is, is reverse engineering uh, things always of always getting yeah. in the audience shoes first and then working backwards from that rather than creating all this stuff first and then realizing, is there anyone even on the other end or is it going to connect with the actual audience? That's phenomenal. Right. Um, any others, best practices that stand out? Yeah. Uh, one thing, um, Kim Meyer, who is the communications director at Granger Community Church, uh, she is amazing. She wrote a book called Less Clutter, Less Noise, which is a really hands-on practical book about church communications. But even just from the title, um, you kind of get what uh, one of Kim's major themes is, man, we make things so complicated. And we... we we do things in such a way that there's so much going on. There's so much clutter. There's so much noise. You know, we live in a world where, you know, the statistic is that the average person sees 3,000 advertisements a day in some form or another. Jeez. And in some ways, think about how many advertisements someone might see when they come to your church on Sunday. From the time they get out of the parking lot, they see digital signage in the lobby. They see banners for the, su the sermon series. They see signage for the youth department, um, and then you know, they come in and sit down, and we start hitting them with announcements, put a bulletin in their hands, or have slides going. We're bombarding people um, with a lot of clutter, and, and we're not, we're not uh, as effective. By, by trying to communicate 20 things, we're not communicating any one thing well. Wow, and yeah. so making a conscious effort to decide what's important this week. These three things, this one thing, um, what can we, are there details we can email later? You know, are there details we can put in a blog post? How can we simplify? How can we be clear and concise rather than uh, cluttered and noisy? Um, that's a challenge no matter what medium you're working in, from film to web to putting a service together. Um, it's always challenging yourself to uh, edit, edit, edit you know, crop, cut away as much as you possibly can. That's good. You mentioned uh, that that book by Kim Meyer, great book. Yeah. Um, what are some of the uh, best resources that you'd recommend in addition to, uh, you know, getting to Echo Conference and getting on Echo Hub and the store there? And I, that book's actually there, I believe. Yeah. Um, and but in addition to that, what are some of the blogs that you like to read? Some of the people you like to follow on Twitter that are really just kind of contributing uh, phenomenal content in the church communications. And that's going to help people that are watching that want to be resourced and resource their team. Yeah. Um, Gary Molander uh, wrote an incredible book called 
pursuing Christ, creating art. Um, but he blogs at GaryMo.com, G-A-R-Y-M-O.com. And he has such, he has the artist's heart and, and he talks about a lot of why we do what we do. Um, if you're an artist in the church, the struggles that you might have, and, and he is just constantly exploring the artist's heart. And, and I love that. I feel like he's always calling me back to, um, back to, back to God, always calling me back to the mission, always calling me back to, um, the purpose. And, you know, he, he's not someone you'll never find, uh, you know, 30 free Photoshop textures on his blog. That's not what he does. Right. Although he, you know, he uses those things as he creates great films, great short films, but it's all about the heart. So I love Gary Um, Tim Schrader, uh, uh, just launched his site, relaunched his site at timschrader.com. Mm. Um, incredible church communication resource. Justin Wise, uh, at Justin Wise, he has been studying a lot about really measuring social media effectiveness uh, and social media best practices. And he's recently joined the team at Monk Development. And they have a blog where they share some best practices. And Justin tweets great links. Um, about new research and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, Tim Schrader and Justin Wise, guys that I know from Center for Church Communication, um, just great, great practical, practical, actionable uh, resources. Tim uh, also recently just launched a newsletter, which is really helpful. Um, you know, it's funny the more the more we've gotten into social media revolution and stuff like that, the the number of people who've launched email newsletters in the last month or two is is really staggering, but they're great. And I'm signing up for them because I still use email. I like email. Yep. Um, so there are some great email newsletters out there. Uh, John Saddington, um, both at Church Mag and at Tent Blogger. Great stuff, practical stuff. Um, I never miss, you know, that stuff. Um, keep that in my RSS reader. Uh, those are some of my favorites. There's so many more, obviously, but uh, yeah, those are some good ones to check out. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, and then, and then how about for you, if, uh, people want to check out your blog posts, personal blog, uh, blogging platform, social media, where are you at on the web? If people want to connect with you. Yeah. Um, I'm at, at Scott McClellan, very unoriginal. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. I don't do much on Facebook for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, I'm also at scottlikes.com, um, which I don't update as often as I should, but there's you can contact me through the site. There's a little bit about me um, and that kind of thing, and I post YouTube videos from bands I like and stuff like that. So that's scottlikes.com. Perfect. Well, Scott, thanks so much for taking your time today to uh, be on a Think International interview. My pleasure. Thanks, Sean. You got it. Think Media TV, helping you move further, faster. Make sure to subscribe to the Think International YouTube channel for more interviews, resources, and training videos. You can also visit our website at thinkintl.tv for more great content and sign up for our email list for news and updates. Think International, training the next generation of leaders and creatives. Movements, because I think that movements, uh, the, the form and the kind of dynamic of movements is really the way forward for the church in the West. What's up? Day one, Calibrate Northwest. Think International, hopping out of the golf cart. Welcome. I'm Jeff. I'm Sean. Kabam! How would you suggest staying on top of social media and, and trending and, and all that? Because it's, it's moving ahead so fast. I kind of view it the same way I view push-ups, right? You've got to do it. Like, if you read about push-ups, it's unlikely that you're gonna get the guns. Clearly, I've been reading about push-ups and not doing them. So, if, you know, it's great to read the book, but if you don't go in and do it, nothing's going to happen. What's up, everybody? Think International, bringing you the best and brightest leaders of our generation. I'm here in beautiful Ventura with a man, a myth, a legend, Pastor Jude Fuquay, pastor of the City Church Ventura. How you doing? I'm doing great. 
Isn't the weather good here? It's beautiful. It's unreal. I mean, back there, it's just, this is nuts. Ocean, incredible. Now, you came down.